Welcome to Who Wants to Be a Nuclear Engineer, the game show that tests the knowledge of students to see if they're fit to be a nuclear engineer. I'm your host, Alex Brand. We'll have several questions of increasing difficulty that all engineers should know. In tonight's episode, our guest, Reactor, will try to receive a nuclear and radiation engineering certificate from the University of Texas at Austin. Can he complete this test on who wants to be a nuclear engineer? Reactor, welcome. Hi, Alex. It's great to be here. All right, Reactor, let's get started. Question one. Which of the following is not found in back-end nuclear waste? Is it A, neutron poisons, B, actinides, C, transuranics, or D, heavy water? Let me see. In the typical nuclear fuel cycle, nuclear fuel like enriched uranium-235 or plutonium-239 fissions due to neutron absorption, releasing energy while creating fission products and more neutrons to continue the fission process. I know that the majority of these fission products have mass numbers around 95 and 135. These include neutron poisons like xenon-135 and samarium-149 that I know build up within the reactor, quickly absorbing neutrons and reducing fission rates. But fission is not the only process occurring in the fuel. I know that, for instance, natural uranium-238 does not fission, but will undergo radioactive decay, transmutating into other elements near its atomic number. These elements, in turn, can decay, resulting in complex decay chains with intermittent fission producing a variety of elements beginning near the parent element and ending up nearly anywhere. Therefore, actinides, which are the 15 elements with atomic numbers from 89 to 103, and transuranics, which are radioactive elements with atomic numbers higher than uranium, are present in nuclear waste, resulting from these decay chains. The last option, heavy water, is found only in heavy water reactors, where it is used as a neutron moderator to control fission rates. I believe the correct answer is therefore D, heavy water. Reactor, you are correct! It is the decays of these radioactive elements in spent fuel that generate harmful radiation to humans that necessitates the need for proper nuclear waste management. On a cellular level, energized photons or particles emitted in the decay modes can ionize the atoms found in DNA, destroying their complex chemical bonds. High radiation doses can cause cancer, neurological problems, or even death. Question 2 is, after approximately how many years does it take for the radiation levels of traditional spent fuel to return to uranium ore levels? Is it A, 100 years, B, 5,000 years, C, 250,000 years, or D, 3 million years? Oh, uh, this one is a bit tricky, but I believe the answer is B, 5,000 years. You are correct! Traditional spent nuclear fuel takes around 5,000 years to return to radiation levels of the original ore, but it will take the spent fuel about 3 million years to decay to average background levels at the Earth's surface. Nuclear waste lowers its radioactivity over long periods of time, by processes such as alpha, beta, and gamma decay. Alpha and beta decay are processes that lower the energy of a nucleus. In alpha decay, an alpha particle, two protons and two neutrons, is emitted. For beta decay, the particle emitted is a fast electron or positron. Such decay processes result in nuclear transmutation. Gamma decay, or photon emission, is another decay mode, but does not result in transmutation. By losing energy through these decays, excited nuclei become stable. Moving on, since radioactive waste can be hazardous to the environment, engineers must figure out ways to keep the waste isolated from the biosphere, and a possible solution is storing all of the spent nuclear fuel in the U.S. in a national underground repository. So on to our next question. Which engineering principle is not important when constructing a nuclear waste repository? A. Waste properties B. The container properties C. The surrounding geology or D. Donald Trump's hair well, I know that storing radioactive waste on the ground isn't as simple as digging a hole and dumping it. The radionuclei is going to have half-lives of several thousand years, and our natural and engineered barriers need to last at least this long as well. So the waste properties are important to consider. Surely, we need to think about the geology of the surrounding area, not only to consider earthquakes, but also how water permeates the rock. Water can transport radionuclei through the water table and into human water supplies. So I'm certain that geology is important. That same water can corrode the containers that store the waste too, potentially leaking radionuclides into the biosphere. So the container properties are important as well. Therefore, I think the answer is D, Donald Trump's hair. Final answer. Why did you say final answer? Anyways, Rector, you are right. Woohoo! I'm gonna be a millionaire. Well, maybe not. 
at least a nuclear engineer. Yeah. Why would you think you'd become a millionaire from being on the show? That's weird. Anyways, there are other solutions to radioactive waste management other than underground storage. Reprocessing is another technique that has been considered. Using chemicals to separate and recover fissionable plutonium from spent fuel, nuclear reprocessing can reduce the volume of high-level nuclear waste and its radiotoxicity. So our next question is, how many tons of nuclear waste is reprocessed every year around the world? Is it A, 50 tons, B, 1,000 tons, C, 5,000 tons, or D, 10,000 tons? Let's see. France, United Kingdom, Russia, India, and Japan are the only countries in the world that have commercial reprocessing facilities. I know that the largest nuclear fuel reprocessing plant in the world is in France and has a reprocessing capacity of about 1,700 tons. So my guess would be answer C, final. Well, Reactor, you are right. I knew it. I'm smart. Yes, Reactor, you've gotten this far, and I need to say that you are now a nuclear engineer. Yeah.